Mural Design. The theme for our mural is to inspire. You will design two compositions for two murals. Your job is to be creative in your design and to inspire others with your work. Use color pencils, markers, and other materials for your design. The mural is going to be painted with acrylic paints. A grade 12 art program of 18 students. Given the opportunity to coat the bare white walls of their school. The chance to paint and fill their home with a part of themselves. To leave an impact and hopefully inspire others. After our teacher, Miss English, gave us this opportunity, we all set off, creating thumbnails, layouts, and designs for what we want to see in our hallways, spending the next few days on our propositions. After that, we all came back and showed each other our designs. Everyone both excited and interested to see what others have done. And it was amazing to see the creativity, the inspiration and ideas just exploding. Wanting to get an idea of what people think the murals should be, our teacher decided to hold a vote with the public. Setting up all our designs on a table side by side with a small bowl. Letting our class, along with an accompanying couple of classes, the task to vote a marble for the mural that you like. The vote giving us an idea of what the public wanted. But now, it was our turn to deliberate and decide on what we want. Spending a good amount of time thinking and arguing about our favorite designs, taking into account the work labor, the artist's elements and principles, and the meaning of the piece itself. Wanting it to fit comfortably where it is. To get a better idea of how the mural would look like in our school, we went around from hallway to hallway. Considering how students would lean against the walls, the reaction it would get, and even just the sunlight and how it interacted with it. After all this talking and discussion, we finally decided on three works. This one by artist Sylvia Yeshkevich. This one by artist Eliza Verdan. And this one by artist Katia Buendia. Now that we have our picks for the murals, it's finally time to prepare for the painting. We split ourselves up into groups in order to the work labor and what strengths we artists have. Next was the material that we would paint on, our teacher then ordering in seven wooden boards of various sizes. Because of the different lengths, we need to cut them down to the same size. Then after cutting, we had to sand them down and get rid of the original varnish. Finally, cover the board in a layer of gesso, using it as a white primer base for the paint. Then, after all the board prep, it's time to carry them up to the second floor to the photography room. In order to get an idea of the scale and how the mural would fit, we need to get an outline of the design and put it on the boards. In order to do that, we printed laminated line versions of the designs. Then we projected the prints onto the boards finally getting a glimpse of what our finished piece would look like. Now we are almost ready to paint, but in order to do so, we need to get some idea of what the artist envisioned it as. To do so, we gather references, images, and just other things that the artist needed to properly display their ideas. Anything to help the painters wrap their minds around it, to tackle the original vision of the artist. At last, we're finally ready to paint.
started off doing the first layer, just getting simple shapes and areas of color, getting as much of the board covered in paint as possible. First getting the general ideas of what the piece is, then going over it with detail, and getting a better idea of what it should really look like. Finally, after all this prep, building something that was actually inside the artist's mind. When doing the murals, we essentially used three main techniques. Because of the paintings requiring sharp, strong edges and lines, we needed a way to create these lines without frustratingly trying to do it by hand. How you do so is by using masking tape. For when you want smooth transitions between values and hues, the artist then blends. Using two brushes or just having both of the paints wet beside each other, you then apply and mix them together, blending to get the exact look that the artist is going for, creating smooth blends and gradients of paint. Finally, when you want or need to get more shape and form to your piece, you must create texture. In order to get any texture we want to protrude out from the board, we must use modeling paste. This being a white thick paste, using the palette knife to apply it, spreading and forming it into the shape we want. This can be used to create bark, waves, or just any sharp edge that you want. These three techniques were mostly used, but along with that were a multitude of others, such as drip painting, stenciling, and drawing. A layer of clear matte varnish being reapplied in order to seal and protect the work. All of this hard work going on for about two months, finally culminating into the results. Over 60 days of painting, hard work, and learning, we finally finished. These pieces then to be permanently put onto the walls of our school through the medium of art, transcending any words, just communicating passion, love, and creativity. Thank you.